Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Evil Dead Rise. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> Full disclosure. This has been a fucking terrible month. If it hasn't been things that are affecting me, numerous things that aren't even involved with me directly, but friends and whatever, family... And then as a month goes along, it starts affecting me personally. And if it's not one thing, it's another. And it's just been fucking horrible. It's been hard for me to get my thoughts together, even work and, you know, financial problems. Like, everything just mounts up. So, it was comedy time. And, I, you know, I got to watch a comedy. My radar was set on Spaceballs or a Bachelor Party. But things got so fucking bad and so fucking ridiculous, like, heartbreaking, fucking everything. I just had enough. So, let's watch Evil Dead Rise. <laughs> Fuck it, just go horror, go fucking, just balls to the wall, blood, craziness. Why fucking not? I just don't, don't know anymore. So, this fucking whole fucking podcast, whatever the fuck we're calling it, is probably going to be riddled with anger and fucking hurt and just everything because the movie fucking is annoying. This fucking movie annoyed the shit out of me. I actually liked the remake they did not too long ago. Hmm, I wonder what it is. Like, what was it, what was it called? Um, anyway, big fan of the original Evil Dead. Even the Evil Dead 2, which is really one with a bigger budget, right? Evil Dead 3, these are medieval, it goes back in time. I love it. The campiness, the slapstick, horror, terror, uh, comedy, all involved. Bruce Campbell, uh, godsend, just a unique personality and actor. Brings it to life. It's a cult classic. I'm fucking down. And then they make a TV show that is fucking bonkers with Bruce Campbell. And it is fucking amazing. Love it. And yes, I can go look back and be a critic about the first three movies, you know. But they they charm me, right? Even if I was talking about Spaceballs or Bachelor Party, right? Because Bachelor you know, it came on my radar recently, which is why I made, mentioned them. Bachelor Party is a fucking... Pretty gross movie in a sense when you think about it. But anyway, I'm okay with it. I'm on board. Young, watching the original ones, moving into the, you know, whatever. Just a big fan. Then they make a reboot not too long ago. And I say not too long ago, but I'm not sure. Um, and I was, I think, pleasantly surprised that I enjoyed it. They didn't try to amp off. Um, I think it was just called Evil Dead. And um, that was the one in 2013. And, uh, you know, I, like I said, I want to just face these things head on. Because, like, when I deal with my problems, if it's one by one, I'm good. I got my tools, my techniques. You know, when everything hits me at once, it just gets crazy. So here I am, Evil Dead Rise, big fan of everything. Just loved the tv show and when they made the reboot i was into it okay they didn't mimic anything too much they centered it around what was prop prop probably the correct thing and okay so it has its flaws and whatever so this movie starts off and you know everything's bad like i just know it and yes my fucking attitude and my hurt my sorrow despair depression Fucking er whatever. It is all part of this. Fine. This movie starts off, first off, with a pretty good way you want to set up a uh, Evil Dead movie. You've got trees and a lake and, you know, a cabin and a, a woman and, you know, okay, well, we're getting ready, right? Well, they have to really, really put it in your face that a, the kid has a drone, right? And... As I'm watching it, and I'm like, okay, so this is a drone shot, okay, oh, you know, teenager stuff. I'm kind of, st like, this is like the first couple of minutes, so, but I'm kind of like, okay, well, 
All right, so it's not going to be Evil Dead Rise like the, the prequel, um, obviously, because I would think that it would just go back to the the tapes and the, the record player from the first movies and what they were doing. Okay, so it's Evil Dead Rise. It's a new rise, I guess. All right, so we've got a drone, and you've got a female who kind of looks like she can pull this movie together. Like, I'm kind of invested, like, because, I mean, there's nothing going on yet, but she's reading a book or something, and, you know, the, the drone almost hits her, and they have this shitty argument, and then you see the kid, the guy who is driving the fucking drone, and it, you know right away this fucking movie's just fucked. Because every line of dialogue... Every mannerism, every fucking look is bad and terrible. You can't even get a fucking teenager to look like he knows how he's drinking a beer. And, or a beer, whatever fucking you want to call it. And this is the beginning of your movie. The worst setup, the worst fucking shit ever. And then we get to a little creepiness and horror. Fine. Alright, we got a cabin that looks strange and weird. Oh, what, you know, okay, whatever. And every setup, every nuance to this movie just feels empty. Like, there's no weight. And the real weight comes later because this is just a 10-minute intro into Evil Dead. And again, besides the shitty teen acting, I could watch a Friday 13th. I don't care. So, still kind of on board, but you know, you roll your eyes. Like, this is fucking horrible. It's not how a kid acts. It's not how a kid walks. No, he fucking uses his drone. Nothing is... Anything. Alright, so let's get to it. Boom, boom, horror. What is this? Oh my god. Alright, let's rip the girl's fucking hair off. Alright, so she's not going to be a lead. Fine, okay. Unless you want to have her go through the movie, which would have been cool, like her coming up, showing up like 40 minutes into the movie. Anyway. And then the fucking girl, she does this stupid thing with the drone, and she gets blown into the water, which is fucking stupid because there's propellers, and the propellers only slice her face. Alright, but she's evil deadified, dead eye. Whatever. Then she rises out of the water in a fucking, you know, rising of levitation, supernatural craziness. And because the fucking guy jumped in to save her, you know, because he has to, right? Because it's fucking stupid. He gets his head ripped off and thrown on the dock and then she rises, right? So, oh my God, the evil dead rises. Boom. There's your 10 minute intro into the movie. And regardless of the bad acting or whatever, it's a premise. It's got me where I am, and I can run with it. I'm not lost yet. I'm not, like, fucking super angry, depressed, like, this, this immediately, whatever, but my warning signs are up, and, like, where am I gonna go with this? All right, so, how does this connect? Well, it's pretty dumb, but we'll get to that. So, roll credits, whatever, movie really starts, and we get, like, 20 minutes, because the movie's only an hour and a half. By the way, the movie's like an hour and a half. And right away, I was happy. I was like, wow, an hour and a half movie. Bang for your buck. Get it in. Tell me a good story. You know, um, get this Evil Dead franchise back. Because I agree. I like the other one. So I was wanting a continuation in some way. Even if you bring, you know, Bruce Campbell back or whatever. Or groovy shit. Alright. So the movie officially starts. And it's in a city. What? Okay, fine. You know, we got to get a reason for them to go to a cabin. That's obvious. And it's a mom and her three fucking horrible fucking acting kids. And not, not their fault. Obviously, you got a little fucking girl in the movie. She's probably amazing. But nothing in this fucking movie works for me. So, here we got a 20 minutes. So, they're going to make it a half hour. Got 10 minutes of the opening. Let's get you with some Evil Dead shit. What's going on? What I'm confused. Like, I can't... Okay. Whoa, Evil Dead. All right. Blood, mayhem. Right. So, mom, family, strange sister. Sister, um, you know, we got to show her on a fucking toilet doing a test. And she's, maybe she's pregnant or not. Whatever. And then you got the family in the, in the building. And it's a fucking, I think, a 14-floor building. And there we are. We have to spend 20 minutes really getting to the nitty-gritty of this family because the sister shows up and there's an awkward thing going on with, oh, her husband, and she didn't tell her her husband was divorced or he left her, but no, she did because she sent her two phone calls, but the sister's a fucking guitar tech and she's whatever. Now, in this 
premise and setup. Um, this is just the worst introductions and family things I've I've seen. So you've got a young daughter. Let's say the, let's say the oldest daughter, or whatever teenager, maybe young, whatever. And she's got a look, and she's got something that make make you think, you know, okay. Uh, she's probably above the others in talent wise and skill, whatever. And the scenarios they introduce into a bed, they don't feel like family. This doesn't make really sense. And then they get to the younger son who's, you know, middle teens. I don't know. And it's fucking stupid. And it has nothing to fucking do with anything that makes you feel like this is a real kid in a real fucking world doing his DJ shit. It's just bullshit. Horrible dialogue. Then you got the littlest girl in the movie, probably the best fucking actress, technically. Well, the mom's good, but she never gets to really do anything that's worth it. So we've established the family. The sisters, are, you know, showing up. And once the sister shows up and integrates herself, you kind of see where the movie's going to go. So I'm not on board really no more. And, you know, the aggravation starts kicking in because... I don't want to see the dumbest dialogue ever followed up by the dumbest premises ever, by the dumbest setups ever, and you want to tell me a story. Now, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a general rule about writing scripts and stuff, and, you know, it's show, don't tell, right? You don't want people always extrapolating dialogues and going through minutiae and all this stuff. You know, you show that the mother's a really good mother or, what, okay, right, fine. But when you do it like this, in this fashion, it doesn't work for me. I don't believe it at all. You want me so invested, but it doesn't matter. Conversations don't feel real. Then you got this setup where they got to go get pizza, and then things are going to stop going, right? You get the pizza, the earthquake happens. And there's just, like, there's no reaction. There's no facial camera angle, close-up that ever conveys a real true feeling to me and this is just a mundane setup to movie where this is a mother you know she's going through shit she's taking care of three kids her husband left her sister shows up oh i sent you two messages two months ago you should have known about this wah, wah, wah. you know family get together we have a tight knit this is how it's going to work but it never works it never grounds me it never invests me in anything because guess what no one's going to a cabin you find out this has nothing to do with the cabin because when the earthquake happens there's a hole in the ground. And by the way, when the younger son, who's going to get pizza with the fucking family, right? Because you send the little fucking four-year-old out to get pizza, you know, with the, okay, fine, whatever. L.A., I don't, I don't know, I don't know. So, earthquake happens, oh no, scary stuff, right? You know, this is potential, this is real-world shit. This could fucking happen, it does happen, I'm sure, and people are, you know, always, they have their routines and however they handle this stuff. Fine. As it settles down and people are like, oh, be careful of aftershocks, it, the youngest son goes, oh, look, a hole in the ground. Now, by the way, it's an earthquake and the ground is splitting. So there are probably lots of holes in the ground. And it feels so forced, so dumb, so stupid that he goes over and he climbs in. And you know what? I, I don't care. And when you have the original movies, you get all the campiness, all the goofiness, all the fucking slapstick comedy intertwined with this horror. And, and you can go back and you can pick it apart. I'll sit with you and, and, and listen to you tear it apart as a critical thing. But when the things come together and it works and you can ex at least explain why you enjoy the movie. I'm not enjoying this movie and I'm not even looking at it critically in that sense yet. Like, I want to be invested. I want to. You know, really understand what the, with the with the oldest daughter really going through, and you know whatever. And then the youngest daughter, you're setting up these things that are building their character, but you just throw them away later. Decisions are just one to the other with no real basis. What you just set up, you spent 20 minutes setting up this family, all the things, and as it goes on, it just doesn't have any weight to me. I wanted to be entertained. Maybe I didn't need a goofy slapstick Bruce Campbell cameo and him showing up. But I kind of wanted an interesting movie with a cabin or woods. And the way they 
connected it with the um, Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead. There's ways here where anything could kind of happen. You could also connect this to Bruce Campbell. Like, you can do these things. They mention things like one of the three books type things. And, you know, there's little hints because they do play the recording, sort of what you hear in the first movie. And you do get some information about the book. Now, as the kid goes into the fucking hole and he finds his vault, he takes stuff. And, of course, he takes exactly the right things, exactly the right manner. And every... Like I said, this is a movie, you know, you're building on these premises and you want to do jump scares and you want to do creepiness and you want to start introducing that, I don't know, classic Evil Dead sound of a whining, creepy, eerie thing like and, and it's not working. So you're introducing these kids, there's no charisma, there's no depth of this is a family at all. You're making up these di this dialogue. All the preparations to get this movie going never work for me, so great. And then he's got to get a fucking the Necronomicon. But when he goes to get it, it's like living and breathing. The, 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 the cloth that it's wrapped in is like breathing, bubbling. And you're like, fucking fuck you. Like, you're not doing the slapstick. So this is, this is really a 15, 16-year-old kid who's into DJing, who's excited to find a hole in the ground during an earthquake, goes in it. Find some old records and stuff, and that you can believe, right? Because, okay, some paper, oh, maybe, okay, because he's, you know, he's a DJ, get it? You know, it's set up already. I got the fucking needle, old school shit, right? Whatever the fuck. Doesn't work. But it's living and breathing under the cloth, and he goes to see what's going on. And it's just, but you know no fucking kid's doing that. So he opens it and... Uh, spoilers is a bunch of water bugs or roaches or something. Home, oh, no. Jump scare again because, you know, or, or is that before the Jesus fucking cross thing that falls? Whatever. I'm okay. Let's get out of the fucking hole because now you gotta expose this curse thing and whatever, right? So we get back to the fucking, we start getting back to the house and the mother's worried, don't know. They're getting ready and this is a great part of the movie because the mother's worried, the kids went out to get pizza, an earthquake hit, oh no, and again, it's real world stuff that should feel believable. But what they do is they introduce the cast of characters that just happen to be in the building. Now there's 14 floors, again, maybe, I'm not sure, I think, and I can estimate that there's probably 8 apartments on each floor and maybe i've missed a thing where like seven floors were being uh, like being asbestos tested or whatever so there's no one right but they got to show the cast of characters and right off the bat just horrible you got the grumpy old guys got dirt all over for no fucking reason blah 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 and then you got the young you know um good looking young man type thing you know whatever and they're worried. They're trying to get out of the building. So they're setting up the building as fuck. There's elevated or whatever. You, can, you can't get to the fire escape. Because the apartment's like, like every convenience. Every fucking thing they're throwing at you. But now we've got some cancel character stuff you know, going on. And just as they're ready to, I don't know, you know, tie sheets together and try to get down 14 fights. from like, I don't know what the fuck. The kids show up in the elevator, and the mom's like, you don't take an elevator in the... Uh, after an earthquake. And then she hugs him, and it was the only fucking believable part in the whole movie. And they know it's a horror movie. I know I'm not supposed to totally believe, you know, 50 gallons of blood come out of somebody, and a fucking elevator can fill up with blood and burst the doors. Okay, I get it. But from the beginning, I want to be immersed. I want to care about something the characters. I want to get an idea of where the story's going. But now I know it's not going to a cabin. They're bringing this vault that was cracked open, revealed, um, cursed stuff, the book, and some records, and whatever, paper. And they're bringing it to the house. All right, kissy, kissy, lovey. Let's get this movie going. And I'm thinking now it's about a half hour. We're, uh, you know... We're getting ready to fire on all cylinders because the fucking kid, the young son, middle-aged, whatever, he's the, he's the only boy in the family. 
he's gotta be in a fever you know he's got a fever re desperation to open this thing and look at everything and, and okay fine I remember being young going to the you know abandoned houses and stuff you know but you know I do have common sense like I'm not touching the cloth book with it's fucking rising and you know like okay so the oldest daughter you know listen this is not right I don't like the book bring it back tomorrow you promise yeah I promise and okay so I got pissed all right so all right, well, let's get to the right to the first setup because it's right before this. So the kid brings the book and, uh, and, and he's with the older sister. The younger sister, little four year old, whatever. She's doing everything to prep you to think she's going to be one way, not another. Then they'll have the turn later, whatever. So the kid's got the records when they put them out and he's got the book. <laughs> the book is bound in leather. I, he doesn't, you don't know yet because they didn't play the record yet, I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong. But okay, so the book is made of leather, the art and all the drawings are all blood, and binding it on the sides are these like bones with teeth, okay? And he can't get the book open, you know, because th these bone teeth are closing it. All right, so let's go supernatural, fine. In his struggles to open it, he pricks his finger, and blood drops go onto the book. And I wanted to fucking punch my fucking. I just wanted to punch anything. I, I want. Okay, let's be honest. I wanted to punch a lot of things over this month. I've had to be so con in control of myself, you know, ripping table legs off and, you know, holding it up. I'm going to smash something and not committing to it because I take a breath or something. <laughs> All right. So the kid pricks his finger on the fucking bone thing, teeth. <laughs> lock on the on the fucking book and I just want I'm just like you gotta be fucking kidding me okay I get the first movie how it's so campy right but this is like you can almost believe these fucking assholes go to a cab and find some stuff and go hey listen to this and play a fucking tape and the tape the curse is on the tape and oh shit you know we fucked up this everything building up to this is like layers of just bullshit with no real weight for me nothing nothing i don't care nothing makes sense to me it's like bullshit movie that was made i don't get it again i can look at this two years later and maybe you know the time where i'm in maybe appreciate it more in a sense but i did have expectations yes i want to love evil dead i appreciated almost everything coming before comic book and you know whatever so the movie gets going now because the kid not only pricks his finger and, you know, the blood absorbs into the book and the girl goes, I don't like this, you know, I better bring back more. Promise? Yes, yeah, sure. She leaves and then he's going to be DJ, right? Of course, because every setup before that showed him as DJ was the most unrealistic anything I've ever seen in my life. Every expression on his face, every scare, every fucking cut to him is bad. We got the record playing. Now he's doing the thing. Oh, what does it make sense? Let me play it back. Let me turn my finger and go backwards. Well, guess what? When you go and you do this thing backwards, because I've done it before, you never keep an exact rhythm. What the fuck? Are you, are you a robot? Because he does the thing backwards and everything is perfectly. There's no root. There's no like, okay, whatever. I'm just being a dick, right? Listen to it. Listen to it. Get some, you know, you're finding out what's going on. And. And then the curse is fucking revealed. And the mother's in the fucking elevator. The kids are whatever the fuck they're doing. And boom, it hits. And the classic Evil Dead, you know, you don't see it. It's just like the camera moving. Gets the mom, throws her, does some stupid shit with her in the elevator. And everybody doesn't know what her mom is. And here we go. The movie is going evil dead now because the mom the heart of the family the one taking care of everybody is fucking possessed by a deadite whatever and i don't give a fuck i just don't give a fuck i know what's coming i know there's gonna be one fucking stupid setup after the other and then it unfolds with you're in the building the whole time 
let's do some scale let's do some creepy stuff but let's always be on the borderline of shitty there's rare moments like i said that when the mom says you don't go into an elevator after um you know an earthquake and she hugs them it was it felt real it felt genuine now i can admit that like it's a maybe smart you know it's a real world thing you're putting into the movie i'm sure people like i'm in new york brooklyn i'm sure people in la like maybe really resonate with that like it it could affect them it you know okay and i'm looking for those moments in the movie i want to you know be grounded by the oldest daughter and i'm getting involved in like where her potential will be and where this angle is going because you're now locked into a building you're generally locked into an apartment you've got the mom the three kids and the sister mom's possessed you know what's going on and they spend a lot of time torturing the mom and bending her up and making her fucking ugly and you know demonic and then it kind of shifts you know because you got to get the kids and like what's going on and how it's going to come together so the mom's missing what are we going to do whatever okay you finally you know, obviously you find the mom whatever and there's some mayhem shit it's clearly clearly you're in a fucking supernatural movie stop the bullshit you can't play this you can't walk this line and go back and forth it doesn't work the other movie did it smarter it just felt more true it's like someone said you know what i don't want to make a remake of the original movies of bruce campbell those are classics those are like a gem for what they are here's my version this doesn't feel like that this feels like cheap writing cheap stunts cheap effects that were like laughable sometimes and it just starts and you know, it's the mom and you know all of a sudden she's dead and the sister's like you know i just passed i just can't I can't believe she's gone and then the fucking young handsome man closes her eyes and they open because remember you got you got the cast of characters now kind of filtering into the movie you're seeing the old guy whatever all right, well, mom's not fucking dead. She's possessed, and now she's creepy, creepy, creeperson. She's bathtub creepy, everywhere creepy. And when, when the, you know, when the shenanigans start in this movie, it's revealed later, but it's obvious when you watch the other movies, or if you know the law, that in, in a general sense, these supernatural entities don't want to come in and just, shoot everybody with a gun within eight minutes and or stab everybody to death and kill everybody so that is something that they let you know however when when you're trying to convey this in the movie there are certain things you don't want to do so if you have the mother crawling out of the tub and coming after them what you want to do is when they when they run away, you want to have her stop. The camera focuses on her, and she giggles with glee and evil laughter, right? Because what it's revealed is they like to build up the misery and the torture. Fine, I'm down with that. However, you can't have the mother then have Spider Man powers, right? When she leaps across and like, if you don't make the distinction that she's playing with her food, or that's a threat. Like, we got to handle that. What's your goal? Because it obviously should be more bodies for this, for these deadites entities to possess. Right? So, I'm guessing you want, the mom's infected. She doesn't incinerate everybody. Right? Because what, what would kind of be the point? Right? So, let's say she was able to knock everybody out and just burn them all to ashes. What's the point? Right? So... But, again, when you've got bad dialogue from the beginning, the opening scene, an unbelievable family unit, setups and close-ups and angles and everything that's just bad. And you even did it with the little girl, which is a, a bad precedent to set because it wasn't that I thought she was a bad actress. It was because I thought you gave her bad shit. And you, you don't direct her well. Like, it just didn't feel right. Probably, you know, everybody in this movie is probably fucking amazing. I don't put a pit. Oh, you know what? The tune, the fucking came in the beginning with the, with the fucking 
drone is a fucking ass hat. And, and he's the most unbelievable fucking human I've ever seen in my life. Just everything. Anyway. So the shit has started. The mom's dead. She's not dead. It's on now because she's evil deadified and she's going to play with her food. But it does not. It doesn't feel believable. What's weight? What doesn't have weight? She can rip people. You can, she can rip your head off, but she's not going to. Right? Fine. So let's wound them and infect their wounds. Right? Okay. Fine. Let's connect the movies in a sense where that's possible. And... Again, it doesn't feel charming and witty. It doesn't feel heavy and deep. It just feels hollow. Then, and remember, this is now going on. So the threat is on. We're in whatever act we're in, the fucking movie. And this movie for an hour and a half feels like an eternity. But we've got the blood. We've got the gore going. The oldest daughter's the first. The cut on her cheek. Oh, no. I'm dead. I'm a dead eye. You know, boom, boom, boom. This is going on. Oh no, maybe guy in the hallway dies. You know, no, he shoots. The mom is fucking evil. They kind of get it now. And then the fucking sister who came out of nowhere, who is pregnant and whatever, gets told that the kid brought in a book and the book is bad, bad, bad book. And there's nothing you can do because everything's going wrong. And then. The, the fucking sister tries to, you know, figure out what's going on and she can't get the record player to work because the kid says there's no power, but she can handle that because, yes, they showed you earlier she's a guitar tech, she got a soldering iron, or whatever fuck she's got. Just like they showed you the fucking tattoo needle thing. Alright, whatever. So you got the oldest daughter done, so maybe some fucking bystanders in the hallway. I'm not sure if the young thug is done, but, oh yeah. So, as this is going on, the sister gets the power going, and she's got headphones on, of course, and she's listening to the recording, so she can get filled in on the really bad news. That it's all death, everybody's dead, all you can do is run, dismember them, whatever, it's on, or whatever, okay? Fine. As that's being revealed, the mother finds a way in, but before that, they think they can do this tight, this jumping across the line back and forth. So as the mother's trapped outside in the hallway because she can't get in because now they're onto her, right? You know, whatever. They fucking have her go ape shit on the fucking people in the hallway. So the young handsome guy, she jumps on because I'm guessing this is a threat. Like she doesn't want to torture and fuck with these people. So she bites a chunk of his face off with his eyeball, right? Spoilers. But... What they do is, she then spits the eyeball into another person's mouth. And by the way, when it happens in the original trilogy, whatever the fuck it is, you laugh your ass off and you're like, what the fuck? Some people are like, oh my god, it's gross. Here, it's the fucking stupidest fucking thing you've ever seen in your life. Because it just doesn't work. Why would you rip that off? Why would you even bother... Right, so now, now the kid's infected with the eyeball. I get it, right? And they did stuff in the past where there's a reason why, you know, Ash had to cut his arm off, right? His hand got infected. It was attacking him, so he cut... I get, I get it. I get the premise of these things. The girl's cut on her face, gets it, whatever. And then the fucking one is happening. The young son finally dies. Uh, he gets fucking... Oh, by the way, everybody's got to get wounded and duct taped themselves, right? At some point, except for the little girl. She gets a nosebleed because she bumps her nose, like, whatever. But every setup is stupid. Every fucking leaping thing is stupid. The young kid is stupid when he gets attacked by his sister, who they think they killed but tied up. Not tied up well enough because she floats. And when she floats, she floats real fast and it looks really bad. And she runs into the guy's knife. Well, the guy kid then is in shock and every frame, every close-up, horrible. She pulls the knife out, stabs him in the arm. And guess what? You're just waiting for the fucking duct tape to come out in 10 minutes. And he's going to be wrapped up like the sister is. Because she was fucked up. You know, a knife right through the hand. Halfway through the fucking Big Michael fucking Myers knife. Right? That's not going to hurt the sister. That's it. You got duct tape and some fucking moist towelettes or something like that. You're fucking set. So the kid gets stabbed in the arm. Oh, ooh. Oh, I'm so worried. Whatever. You know what? Fuck the kid. Let's stab him in the chest afterwards and have this 
fucking brawl because now you know he's dying. All right, let's get that open with. Maybe the little girl who's like now being revealed that she's not the brave girl who was cutting the heads off the doll, that she's really scared and whatever. But let's give her a little bit of courage. Let's intertwine that with the sister who visited, who's now trying to, you know, piece together whatever. But the mother creeped in. She's got through the fucking vent, which was dumb because you had the cat up there. And you already told us you didn't have to show her. Look at the cat and try to and go, all right, all right, I just don't care. Your build ups and your setups, who's around the corner, like nothing's working. So the mom shows up and she's got to take the headphones off because she has a clue now of what she's up against, right? She's listened to the information, she's clued in, but it doesn't fucking matter, right? Because dead, 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 dead by dawn now. The only one left is the fucking little girl and the sister. So let's get the fuck out of here, I guess. Let's get out, but remember, we can't use this. That doesn't work. And the only fire escape is behind a locked door, I think. And we have to make a break for it type thing because the house is fucking blood. It's like a nightmare. Everything is just super fucked. Whatever. But let's get out into the fucking hallway. I'm skipping over things because I got to get this fucking thing done. I, I really can't deal with life in general. And I almost didn't do these. But I made commitments and promises to myself and whatever. Like... I shouldn't really be, I shouldn't fucking, shouldn't be in this position. But anyway, I got the fucking movie. We got fucking mayhem. It's getting towards the end. Let's get the little girl, the sister, and get the fuck out of here. So, hallway. Dead people around the hallway, you know, they're coming back because now that they need it, deadites are possessing others. Or is it a hint, East Egg, that it's really one entity? That's doing it? That's able to possess more? I'm not sure. I don't give a fuck, really. Because I think it's like alluded to that, but I don't care. And I don't even care if it's one of the three books and they're going to connect the other movies with the other books. I don't really care unless, you know, something piques my interest about the trailer or whatever. Because all I saw from this fucking trailer was the mom in the bathtub going, your mom's with the maggots now, right? That thing. All right. Let's usher in the end of this movie. Sister, little girl, hallway. Dead start coming back to life. Let's get to the door. Hammer, I think. Get the door open. Can't. She sees a shotgun. You gotta get the shotgun, but it's in a death grip. The guy's dead. He's got the grip. Get the death grip off. Right? Whatever. The mom comes. Oh, let's blow a leg off. Let's blow her arm. And then calamity and fucking what's this? What's that? Boom. I grab your leg. I shoot. I miss. Whatever. Elevator. Oh my god, the elevator doesn't close, but the little girl sees the brooch or the fucking key or whatever. And she pulls it, and the elevator closes. But really, what does it fucking matter? You've established it doesn't fucking matter. As a matter of fact, you've established in the first movie that even if you get away in your fucking car, these entities or whatever will fuck the bridge up and close roads and make you drive in circles. Like, whatever. And you've already blurred that line through this whole movie. You didn't go full comedy, you know, whatever. You wanted to go serious, but nothing's believable. Then you try to, oh, I spit the eyeball. Like, it just, just fuck off, right? So, we're in the elevator. Why not? Right? Because you got to use this fucking elevator. It's so awesome to see the scene. You know, you've never seen it before. Like, with the mom fucking posing her in all different poses. and Right? We didn't spend enough time here. But you know what we'll do? Something unique. We'll do something fucking classic. They're almost ready to get away, and then the mom, or whoever, is on the top of the fucking elevator, and we're in fucking trouble. Because guess what? The elevator starts filling up with blood. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it's up to your ankles, and then your knees, and then your chest, that type of blood. And the mom on top, which is going to come in. What the fuck? Right? And then... You're wondering about this fucking stupid thing that says the weight thing. And then I go, wait, you know what? <laughs> Before, what they did was they set up that the bomb, because she blew her leg off and her arm off, and that it might be one entity, the other fucking deadites start ripping holes in her, and she's like, I don't know, X, I don't know what the fuck's going on. But what happens is they merge into one being. So they make a being that cannot move. 
It's cumbersome. It's awkward. It, it can't do super Spider-Man leaps. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but let's make this monstrosity because it's revealed, remember, that it likes to torment and put misery. I get it, right? Dead by dawn and build up people's whatever. Fun. But now you got this monstrosity. Eight fucking arms, six heads. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Ripping into the top and the thing fills up with fucking blood. And then they show the fucking this careful weight of this fucking elevator can only support so and so. And they cut away. But then you see the elevator. And like no one knows what's coming. Boom! The elevator doors blow off. A huge river of blood comes out and they get spilled out. It's so unique, so grand, so spectacular. It's amazing. And then the sister gets up first, of course, soaked in blood, all red, of course. And then the little girl, you don't know, she's dead, but she's not really dead. But she asks, am I dead, right? <laughs> it's just fucking awesome because it's just fucking, we're here. We're at the fucking end. This is it. But she's coming again. And then, you know, you can see what's going on with the monster. Let's just get the fucking, let's just get them to the basement, right? Fuck it. Fuck this whole movie. Fuck everything. Someone said, you know what? Let's just get to the garage. Fuck trying to kick the door in, shooting the lock off, hammering it off, get to the fire escape. No. We tried the window. People don't want to listen to you. You got dead dykes coming. Get out. But, you know, this is out here. you can't do that. We can't have a fucking 14 floor battle, right? Getting down to the basement or the fucking garage. No. Cut. <laughs> garage. It's fucking awesome. Alright. Here we are. End of the movie. Garage. Car. Start. Gate one open. Gate starts to open. Let's give it gas. And it doesn't work. Not because this monstrosity is holding it down. Or I think it's because there's debris and there's like cracked ground. Which is fucking stupid. And it's so fucking dumb that it makes me smart. I've been called stupid by someone I love. And it's a lovingly thing. And it's a joke type thing. But this is fucking irritating. It's just fucking irritating. Alright. Can't go nowhere at the car, but now this beast shows up. This big spider-human hybrid thing. And as it comes up to the car, it cuts. Somehow, the sister and the little girl develop super speed, like flash powers, because when it cuts and they're gone, they're not in the front seat. However, they're right outside the other door on the other side, leaning against the car. Now, you might ask, can there be a better hiding spot? No. Apparently not. Because they then spend time shifting around the car, avoiding the monster, the supernatural monster. Again, if I'm going to write this and I'm going to go, you know what? Yes, this creature could have killed everybody. I want to build up torture, terror, misery, fear, and I want it to brew because maybe it gives me more power. Maybe my power levels go up and my meter hits the red. I don't know. Then I could open up a portal. Like, I don't know. It's just fucking dumb. It happened once in, like, Jurassic Park, right? When it, it hits the car, but there's a, a thing, like, you know, they can't see, you know, whatever. It's just, this is fucking ridiculous. Then, smart move, they run to a pillar and hide behind. This is the shit, right? Because that's smart. It planned it. Now it doesn't really know where it is. Like, even if it's trying to make it to... Ooh, let's... Right? And then, uh-oh. The gate's starting to close. All right. Let's go. Let's run. They, they, they should have done, like, the Bionic Man in slow motion. They should have just had, like, blood daggers being formed, hurling at them, like, 800 miles an hour, and doing, like, Matrix fucking dives and moves. No, okay. They run. They both get underneath the gate. Just in time. Bam! Movie's over. Oh no. The little girl gets dragged back in. Oh uh, yeah. So the sister's outside freaking out. And now the director tells her, you know what? You had enough. Obviously, you know. You have had enough. 
You were across the fucking planet, guitar teching. I don't know. You found out you were pregnant. You came home to see your sister. Found out you're a cunt, and you never returned the calls. You never even checked your fucking voicemail from her to find out that her husband left her, and then to find that she called you to help her deal with the husband leaving. Right? Holy shit. You're locked out the gate, and now the little girl, the prize of the fucking movie, apparently, is gone. What a way to end the movie and, like, continue for a, you know, a sequel. Oh, no. They don't end it there. Because she gets through, right? And then they do the stupid camera thing that they do in some movies. Pretty good sometimes. But, you know, the camera's, like, probably mounted on her chest, looking right at her, and she's running with the thing on her. It just fucking looks horrible. Now, in this time, this monstrosity with eight fucking heads and 14 arms, legs, I don't know, right? Has got the little girl. But you can't kill the little girl. And you want to argue that it's building up whatever, and terror and whatever. I'm calling bullshit, okay? Fuck you. Fuck you, movie. Fuck the fact that she can rip people's heads off, she can move, she can leap, she can fly, she can levitate, but she'll crawl and she'll like play with a fucking four year old when you know the movie is done. She's done. It's over. The movie should have been then a confrontation between the fucking sister and her other sister and the monstrosity she's become. And then you show, because what they did was when I said they showed that the sister had enough, I think it's bath or whatever. She's now doing these short breath grimaces, anger, confusion, and my going insane face, facial things. And you can tell it's exactly what the director told her to do at the right time of the fucking movie. And I don't buy it at all. I give no fucks. So her fucking frantic race to save the daughter, the fact that the fucking girl, little girl's not dead and mangled and doesn't become an ornament on this fucking monster is fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. Go for it. You kill the oldest daughter. You kill the middle son. Right? The fucking guy in the tape says this isn't over until innocence dies. He said it on the fucking tape. Clearly, they should have been left with the sister is fucking insane with what she's had to do. No, she gets to him in time. Shoots the creature. Maybe says a line that Ash said. The fucking monster comes after her. And the monster beats her up and jumps on the top of a fucking wood chipping machine, right? You gotta have a wood chipping machine in the garage, I guess, or a cement. I don't know what the fuck this thing does. Maybe it cracks diamonds. I don't know, okay? But it's got the two fucking balls with teeth on it that crush everything, and it's got the fucking thing at the other end that blows it out. You see the guys doing it with the trees and the fucking whatever. So this is it. Evil wins, and the movie ends with the creature mounted over the daughter, and it cuts, right? No, that's not what happens. Sorry. That's not what happens, right? You're not going to make a real big decision, right? So the fucking sister is getting dragged into the fucking grinder. But the little girl gets her third wind, her third courage turn, and because now she's like the adult type thing, right? Of course, whatever. And she shuts the machine off. Oh shit, the grinder stops, the daughter gets pulled away. And then, what was revealed in these minutes that happened, because it's the end, is there's a fucking chainsaw now. Of course there's a fucking chainsaw. Of course you would put the chainsaw in 10 minutes before the fucking daughter gets killed. Or doesn't get killed, right? So, when the gate falls... Is she stuck on the other side? She doesn't use the chainsaw to get through. No, because they reveal the chainsaws on the other side, but she can write whatever. Okay, so chainsaw falls. Turn the machine back on. Fine, the little girl turns the machine back on, and fucking, you know, bat sister fuckhead just saws her, pushes her into the meat grinder. All the heads and bodies are fucking disintegrated. Then the mom's left, and then the mom's head's only left, and then it's Oh, you suck. Mom didn't. Mom was sucky. Blah, blah, blah. And then they do this fucking, oh, I kicked the head into the fucking thing, which is so stupid. It's so dumb. It's so irritating. It's so fucking wrong on so many levels. 
everything. This fucking facial twitches and like exasperation, horror, fear, anger, insanity that she's now become with a chainsaw in her hand is so fucking dumb. It's stupid. And then the fucking little girl. I don't care about the fucking end where they, 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 you, they reveal someone is in the building to go get a car. Fuck you. And it's, again, this might be my mood. It might be, you know, I just want to lay in bed and cry every day, whatever. You know, it's just, I don't care. I wanted in my own mindset to watch a comedy, to get through, you know, maybe lift my spirits up and give me new, you know, a new angle on things that are going on. But no, just keep peeping this shit on me. And then I want to fucking watch an Evil Dead movie because it's just, let's get it out. Let's just do it. And I can't even enjoy it. I can't enjoy this fucking movie. And God knows how long I'm fucking talking about this movie. But holy shit. There is a chance I've been this whole time talking about my month. That I've had. And that, that could be the fucking truth here. I, you know, I don't know. I don't do like our podcast in it sometimes. But there are things that you enjoy. Things that you have expectations for. That I kind of love. And they're part of my childhood. And growing up. And teenager. To adulthood. And then some... Decent choices they made with the franchise. I loved the comic books and they integrated all of them. Ash was like teamed up. It was like Freddy, Jace. This is some really cool stuff. I liked the remake to a certain extent. Appreciated what they did. I can't go get behind this movie. I can't fucking take the aggravation that I went through watching it. Dumb setup. It's a dumb setup. Plot. Bad dialogue. Bad interactions. Decent actors. The mother. And you know... Like I said, there's different acting probably in here. Nothing works though as a whole. I just don't feel it. I don't care. Maybe one moment where the sisters were talking and I was like, okay, I can see them be I can see them being related. But I could buy it. But it's so fleeting. It's so fake and painted on like thinly and there's no substance, no depth, no real things for me to chew on and bite on. And when I did find things that I thought would do that, like the, the recordings and, you know, they, they, they spit the eyeball out into people's throats. Like, you just lost me on this movie. Again, this might be something I'll look into and again in the future. I mean, this is, it's been horrible. Horrible this month. And I wanted this to be something that would break me out of it, you know. And for that, maybe I put too much into it. Maybe this is a decent movie. Maybe it's actually pretty good. You know, I'm going to be honest. I don't know. My instincts tell me no. My instincts tell me that if I, you know, on a clear fucking mindset and everything, sat here for two hours and decided to do one of those breakdown videos, I would just find multitudes of fucking bullshit. However, I want to give the benefit of the doubt of, I don't believe people make movies to be shit. Maybe things are greenlit, and maybe things are not given time to redo the script and make it better. I get it. And then you commit to shooting or something. That may be what this thing is. But it kind of reminds me of where the Halloween franchise recently went. Where Jamie Lee Curtis comes back and does the Halloween, and I, I liked it. Even though they butchered the fucking past movies, where all you had to do was be have a mystery and say, Oh, I've lived lots of lives, whatever. No, you wanted to shit on the movies. But you know what? You can do that if the movie's good. So that Halloween is good. Then they made another Halloween and then the le recent one. And they're fucking garbage. Shit movies. And this isn't even my issue with like a John Wick movie, which I know people are going to love, which I know is pretty good. And the fucking issue will get passed on the back for pulling off the shit they pulled off in that movie. It just didn't fit me, you know? In whatever way. This is almost insulting. It's, you know, it just doesn't mark. And thinking about it, just getting me to do the podcast, like everything, doesn't work for me. So I'm going to apologize for my attitude, my behavior. And maybe I will revisit this. Do I recommend this? No. I'm going to be honest, no. You're a super fan or whatever. Maybe you can get some joy out of hearing the recordings. Because I guess I did in that sense. Like I was like eager and I was paying it. I was like really invested 
it didn't pay off really for me but there you go evil dead rise don't care about and like nothing like the other movie had the silhouette of um bruce campbell was a groovy or something like that. It's, it's like i don't i want to get this done with i want this month to be over i want things to go back the way they were when i'm at least in control of my fucking emotions, my feelings, my focus, and all that stuff. So, again, this is a mixed bag for me. Mostly bad. A lot bad. But I want to be honest and say it could be my headspace. Maybe I'll give another look at it. And that's where I'll end this. I wish everybody the best. I love you all. Despite what people might think of me, what say about me. Whatever. I have never done anything on purpose. If anything, it's my shortcomings, but not done intentionally. And I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.